So, Crow, do you perhaps ever want to get involved in analyzing one of your games? So, guys, what we're going to do today is a combination of analyzing games. It can be, like, over-the-board games. You can bring them. Um, you can also just analyze games here from Lee Chess. If you want me to look at a game, we can talk about it together, and uh, it's kind of like a group lesson. Um, just send me the link if you can. If you have an interesting game you want to look at, send me the link on Lee Chess. That's the easiest way to do it. Clash Kid is here. This is what he did last week. Um, we actually, he actually sent me a game through a link on Lee Chess. And that's the easiest way to do it. There are more complicated ways you could you could send me games. Um, so I'm let, let you guys know some basics before we get started. Um, a lot of challenges. Suvik, I don't know if, if he subscribed to the uh, to the Twitch stream. I know that Mule Skinner and Nefedov have subscribed. Maybe we'll play a Blitz game as you get warmed up, get settled in here. I, I need to know if Suvik is a subscriber or not because we had a new subscriber yesterday. Um, you need a starting soon screen with a timer. Plucro, um... Yeah, that's a good idea. Actually, I need a lot of things. Um, as I get back to Budapest the 1st of September, I'm going to get a lot more organized when I get back to my office and my life is a little chaotic here when I'm living not really at home. But um, the timing is the timing and that's the way it is. I'm going to play a game with Nefedov, who has recently subscribed to the stream. Plan for today. Hey, Move11. We're going to do game analysis and, uh, and Blitz with, with subscribers. So if you guys have a game you'd like to look at, I actually prefer analyzing games to playing Blitz, but I'm willing to do either or, even other ideas if you guys have them. Clash Kid, can we also analyze chess.com games? You can import it into your Lee Chess, you know, any game from anywhere, you can import it into your Lee Chess. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, all right, against Sephidov, I'm gonna play D4 here. I think it gives him less options because he doesn't have d6 in this position. Well, I take it back. Can they play d6? Yeah, that's kind of a bad ending, I think. d6. No, I have seen uh, castles. That's it. I have seen castles in this position. If you insist on being a rebel, you can play castles and temporarily sacrifice the c5 pawn. Suvik says, why don't you play with me? Suvik, this is a stream that's specifically just for my subscribers. Um, that's why. You have to subscribe on Twitch. But you can come any other day, Monday, Wednesdays, or Fridays, and um, and play Blitz with us if you don't want to subscribe. Um, yeah, thank, thank you, Blue Blue Bot. Help Twitch if you have any issues subscribing. Um, it's um, a big help for those of you that subscribe to support the stream. Nefedov played a6. We go back to our long story about Alejandro Rios, who later became an IM from Colombia. He played this move against me in like 1991. And I played c5. This is very strong for white. So a6, although it seems like a natural move, is actually a serious mistake for black. Thanking Mubat. Mubat is awesome. We need to pay $499, I am right? I believe that's correct. The fee is $499. Unfortunately, not all of it goes to me. Some of it goes to support Twitch, but uh, that's the way it goes. You can also donate to support the stream on my YouTube channel via PayPal. If you enjoy the YouTube channel particularly, um, please donate via PayPal. Even if it's just $5 donations or even $2, if you enjoy the YouTube channel, check it out. Video Chess Training on YouTube. You can make a donation via PayPal to help support it. Um, I don't really make any money on the YouTube channel, so it's uh, it's just a labor of love. C5. Um, free if you have Amazon Prime, right? You get a free subscription to one channel with Amazon Prime. I don't think they have Amazon Prime in, in every country, obviously. Um, I have some issues with Hungary. Queen A5 is a new move. When I'm in Hungary, I can't actually Amazon access all my Amazon Prime features. I think here I should play Knight B3 on that Queen. Uh, 
I can listen to Prime on Amazon Prime Music in Hungary, but I can't access the Prime videos, which really sucks. They have very small selection of, of videos you can watch that are like for international travelers or something like that. But anyway, guys, welcome to my subscriber stream. Same length as usual, two and a half hours. Our moderator, Plucro, is here. The A6 mistake again. Yeah, I mean, my game with Alejandro Rios, which I you can look up in the database from 1991, I lost tragically, like, after, like, just gaining a totally winning position. It was a heartbreaker. Um, in the Philadelphia International 1991, it was like, let's see, I had C5. I think he played... What did he play here? Um, now I can't remember. What did he play after C5? What did he play after C5? This is so weird. I don't recall now. Um, I know that my next move was Knight A4. Strange that it's not coming back to me. But Knight A4 was a novelty by me. Now he's he's wasted some time. Um, Nefedov has played some interesting openings against me. But this one, not his best. Now we have Knight A4. If you guys want to contact me, don't send me messages on on Leechess, but I think that's probably a game su submission. You're, you're going to have to send me the games there, actually. All right. But other me other messages, don't don't bother. Just talk, talk to me on, on Twitch. Um, Queen d8. What do we do now? Play bishop f4? Just kind of, yeah, putting pressure. This looks good. I was also thinking about bishop g5. I want to stop him from playing d6 and freeing himself. But I wonder if this is an error, error, error. Um, maybe I made a mistake? Me? <sighs> like, he might be able to play b6 there. He's actually, like, lost the move, but it looks like you've got to play b6. Okay, I can play bishop takes d6, d takes c, queen takes d8, rook takes d8, takes on b6. Maybe I've got something with that passed pawn. Um, okay, he played e5, though. That's kind of what we're... Kind of what our goal is, to get him to weaken himself. Now, it's possible to play bishop g5, but I'm not sure. All that does is force him to play h6. At the end of the day, I mean, h6 might possibly even be a useful move for black. What's up, guys? Netflix and gaming. Yo, I'm the arrogant dude who offered to draw. What's up, arrogant dude? I know, I got your message. Um, I got a message from you. Or did I? I think you sent me a message. You asked me about the stream. Um, yeah. We get a lot of people who offer draws in, in like, bad positions. And I try to teach people that it's not good. Not good um, etiquette. Nobody, like, teaches people chess etiquette nowadays. Um, okay, E5. Bishop e3. I'm going to go with bishop e3. This supports the c5 pawn. It stops b6. And uh, it goes like knight g4. We'll just let him have that bishop. Probably. Or just play like knight to d5. Um, the king 20... Yeah, you actually typed his name in. What is that? On Tuesdays? Yes. I'm playing with subscribers only today. Yeah, this is... And it's not meant to be only playing. I'm supposed to be analyzing. But everybody's welcome to watch. You know, and, and just hang out and and you can constructively participate with us. Yeah, knight g4 is probably not a bad idea in this position. I wonder. Um, he's freeing himself to some degree with this move. And I think it's a great, great try. I even had some hesitations there as to whether I should have played bishop d2, but bishop d2 looked really weak. Um, now there's the question of which way to take with the pawn or the queen, and I could take with the pawn. It's, um... I think that actually both are probably good, but let's be let's be a little more holistic here. So I think I let him off the hook a little bit, but we still have key control of some very important points, like d6, b6, d5. All jokes aside, you love the stream. Thank you. Um, 
We've got some problems, though, I think. We've let him off the hook. Maybe I had to... Or did we let him off the hook? Maybe not. Maybe not. Okay, let's chill out. We didn't let him completely off the hook. Okay. I thought he could play d6. But then he gets pinned, and I think that that's a problem for him. Okay. We didn't let him off the hook entirely here. As long as we've got this... Still... I don't know. This isn't really... Thank God for another passive move. Um... Maybe he could have tried, like, knight d4 at some point, just interference. Yeah, I mean, I think knight d7 is, is negative progress for for black, probably. Which rook will get it off the, uh, get it off the open line. I'm just focusing on, like, very fundamental kind of, like, domination of the position here in the center. Black should be looking for counterplay. He should be able to get some. Hopefully not too much. Guys, this is a subscriber stream. Um, so don't challenge me unless you're a subscriber, but you're welcome to, you know, contribute to the chat and whatnot. All right. So <clears throat> I missed my towel. I had this towel during the hot weather. I could kind of like, it was like a security blanket sort of joking about that earlier um this knight is coming back to haunt me at some point maybe we just keep it super simple here with like knight to d5 knight takes d5 bishop takes d5 i don't like my knight on b3 that's doing absolutely zero here um we got other possibilities maybe knight e4 knight d6 Man, it feels like he's going to get ways to free himself. And maybe I put the wrong rook in the wrong square. I should have gone here and maybe brought the other rook to d1. Because now his queen looks like it's kind of comfortable there um, on c7. Nothing to bother it. I mean, I know I'm better, but I don't know how much better I am here objectively. Is it enough? Is it enough? Um, hard to say. Bishop h3. No, this bishop's on a good diagonal. Still, I don't like trading pieces that much here. My queen seems misplaced. How about we try to increase the pressure somehow? Just do what I can with these rooks. Not much else to do with them. Latest sub. What do we got? Cellar door is the latest subscriber. Okay, yes, yesterday. Cellar door, but cellar door didn't wasn't obvious to me who that was. That's why I thought it could even be it could even be um, Suvik, you know, because he was asking about subscribing. Now I'm gonna have to play knight a four. It looks like, and you know I'm just trying to stop b six desperately. Knight's a little out there, but we're still we're holding him up. It's all about like stopping Black from doing anything. It's a type of chess. It's like vampire chess. We're basically preventing him from doing anything, and we'll tie him up and tie him up and tie him up so he can't move. Um, hello, my friends. Who is that? Brundle Phil. What's up? Otherwise known as Bob. Free Helios. We've got a lot of subscribers. You guys are welcome to submit your games. Clashkin sub submitted a game. Um, if you guys get bored and you don't have any games to submit, we can actually go over one of my games from yesterday. I thought the game with Yellow Dragoon was kind of interesting. Not for the end game that I botched, that we both botched, actually. Not for this, like, badly played Rook end game, but actually because the opening was quite interesting with Yellow Dragoon. If I have to look at a game of mine from recently here, I think that would be my pick. Knight A4. So, he played knight f5, funny. I mean, I've been kind of waiting for f5, you know. It seems like he's been very careful um, not to weaken himself by playing that move, which is interesting. So now queen d3. Or queen e4. I mean, d3 feels like the natural square. Nothing can really attack my queen here. And everything is protected. Except for this, I talked about loose pieces drop off with one of my students recently. Um, John Nunn's catchphrase, 
LPDO. I have an, a loose piece on A4, but the fact of the matter is he can't attack it with anything. Like Queen C6 is obviously not possible. B5 is not possible. He can't move his D pawn. Um, he's pretty paralyzed at this point. Yeah, this is the one move that I was concerned about, and he spotted it. So the threat is D5 or D6, and I think we need to to take that threat seriously. Tripling on the D file doesn't look like enough. We we can actually look at this and say, okay, he weakened the F, F7 square a bit. I'm getting low on time here, by the way. Um, we probably want to take that in consideration. Rook C1. Rook C1 is quite interesting. Don't know if that's going to cut it. He can take and take with the queen. <clears throat> All right. Try not to panic. My knights are not stopping d6. Bishop d5. Rook c1. e4. Knight d4. Knight takes d4. Doesn't stop it either. No way of stopping it. And we have stopping d6. It's like unbelievable. Oh, man. G4. G4 is just radically weakening. It probably doesn't help. So we'll just calmly come up with a move here. Obviously, bishop h6 can be met by e3. D6, it's complicated, at least, it's complicated. I don't see anything special for me. I've lost a lot of my advantage here. We might be able to come up with like a microscopic advantage, um, like a knight on a knight on b6 at the end of the day. If if d6, pawn takes pawn, queen takes, queen takes, rook takes, rook takes, knight takes, knight b6. He played d5 though. How the heck does that work? Okay. Should I just take it? I'm scared suddenly. I'm going to go with the variation that I actually looked at. Do I have any tricks? He's got knight d4 all the time. Rather not trade pieces. I don't see any way. Nefedov has defended like brilliantly this game. I mean, most people would have freaked out and played f5 at some point. He found a way to just neutralize all of my advantage. It's pretty credible. Incredible and credible. I don't see a really good move here. And I don't like simplifying, but he's going right into the variation I said. Do I have anything here? Um, knight a5? Rook on the seventh. We've got the C file. He can trap his bishop if he takes the pawn. Your guess is as good as mine. Yes. Man, he's just totally played like a genius. Now I'm lucky if I'm not worse. No joke. I'm only slightly worse now. Fortunately he doesn't have, he has knight takes knight, knight takes knight, rook c8, that's probably what we'll see. Um, I'm barely hanging on. I 
Not sure if E3 is a good move by me or not. I think I'm in trouble now. Grabs the open file, no? No. Anyway, he's got he's got play here. No matter what I do. Well, that was lucky, because he's better there. And um He's lost on time. That was lucky because he's better there. If he takes, if he doesn't take on c4, he just stands better. b5 or, or even bishop f8. Wow, man. Nice game. I mean, terrible opening, but great defense and comeback. You're waiting to be the 100th subscriber. Okay. Um, so if you guys have games you want to submit like I'm gonna analyze this game of Clash Kid so at some point I could have brought my knight back to c3 maybe um, I was clearly better but he really did a great job here with this d rook d8 I don't know what I can do after rook d8 I think I can stop d6 so great defense man great defense and you were you're really hanging, hanging on. He only made four inaccuracies, no mistakes, no blunders, Nefedov, I thought. But the opening was your only flaw. You know, and finally playing bishop takes c4 at the end. You can't play a6 in this position. As strange as that might seem, it's like a normal Sicilian kind of move. But it's not very good. c5. And then, I guess most people play knight takes d4 or queen c7. Yeah, I guess queen c7 was what Alejandro Rios played. Um, you played queen a5, and we're following a Velikov game, a very strong player from, like, Ukraine, I think. So, queen d8, so I played, I played pretty, pretty correctly, but he defended like a genius. All right, man, um, you're slightly better there before you played bishop takes c4 and lost on time. And this should be a draw, the white has a microscopic advantage here. All right, guys, let's take this game from Clash Kid. We're going to make a study out of this and uh, and go over it. So let's see. Study. All right. New study. We'll make this... Um, what's the name of our new study? This will be Slaggy Subscriber. Yeah, that's how I spell it. Oh, my C's not working. Wonderful. Sometimes the keys get funky on me. All right. Yep. All right, let's see. So, Clash Kid is playing white in this game. I guess he... Clash Kid, where did you bring this game from? Another site? Who would submit a game with a blunder in it? I think most people. Um, if you enjoy the stream, please subscribe on Twitch. It's a 95 Rouser game. What? That same variation I played? Are you kidding me? Oh. Okay, all right, no, we played a variation yesterday with, with knight d5. I didn't know what you were talking about, okay. So, you you played this here, or where is this game from? Brundlefil had a game yesterday where each player had like five cent upon loss. It happens sometimes when there's like no tactics. Yeah, that can happen, it doesn't make you a computer. Um, so Clash Kid, where did you play this game? Is this from Lee Chess? Who is this guy, Alua Haran? Or this is from another site, chess.com. Okay, yeah, so here we are. Actually, yeah, this variation you probably played against me too. Um, it's it's pretty it's pretty annoying for black, um, to be honest with you. Probably the main line, and then I don't know which way is the best for black here. It looks like a lot of players play e5 and I try to play a6. I've also played g6. 
against a guy named Matsenko a couple of years ago. Actually, it's more than a couple years. It's been like eight years ago, probably. Um, so g6 is interesting. e5 is interesting, and a6 is interesting. But they all have one thing in common. It seems like white always keeps some kind of slight advantage. And so I would trust whatever Dreyev was playing is probably the best. You know, there's a whole bunch of Dreyev games. He gave up playing this variation, I think, because of other variations. He had a game like this game against Dominguez, where Dreyev drew from 2005. I mean, we could probably follow that and still probably trust the analysis. So you played, or he played your opponent like me. Um, I've played a lot of a6 games here on the stream. I, I don't really love this. King b1, now queen c5. And uh, I did recently have some games along these lines. It looks like kind of unpleasant for black. We had the same exact game, right? Clash Kid, did, did, was it you that I played this with or somebody else? Because I know that I've played this before. Dreyev did this once um, against some guy Vukovic and Drew. But that was previous to his game with... That was previous to his game from the game with uh, Dominguez. And uh, I, I've played this with Black on the stream a few times. It looks like Rook C6 is tempting. With Rook C6... It's like you try to use your rook somehow, like, as a kind of, you know, try to gain some benefit out of the rook having moved out and gone back again. Um, are you going to tell me this is my game with, um, oh, this is the position, okay, that I played all those games with that guy. But how weird is that, man? Like, wh how weird is that that, you know, this game is, is happening so often? Anyway, you know about 95 because... Franco2000, who's a subscriber, um, played it. But he was the first one, right? Franco2000 is a subscriber here from Russia. He's not on the stream very often now because he lives in Russia. It's like 3 a.m. when I'm doing these streams Eastern time. He's a pretty good player. He seems to be like a very strong expert candidate master or, or like a 2200 master. Um, yeah, I mean, 95 is not a known move, you know? And, and I had trouble, like I lost to somebody I almost lost to him. I guess I drew with you. Um, but, I mean, in a vacuum, I'm not sure knight d5 is really a, the best move. You know, I think that it's possible that this main line, like bishop b2, is, is, is better. I don't know. But the knight d5 move looks like it's kind of a tricky move. And um, I was intuitively, like, scared to play knight takes e4 when, um, when I faced this the first time against Franco when I think it was a simul or something um, I was afraid to play knight takes e4 you know it feels like it feels like a materialistic move that gives the initi initiative to the opponent and um, so I, I intuitively just took on d5 now we had a couple games against you against Franco and I think against a third player if I'm not mistaken um, where I played this position and I played knight takes d5 I believe I played knight takes d5 in all games. But it looks like your opponent played the critical move here, knight takes e4. Because after knight takes d5, pawn takes d5, black just has a little trouble getting out. Um, it looks like e5, d takes e6. Yeah, I had this twice. Against Clash Kid, against Franco, and yet another opponent. And I've tried... I guess I tried both three captures, or did I play... I think I played f takes e both times. The computer says f takes e. This is a very unpleasant position for black because of the just hanging pawns here. And there's really no counterplay. Um, I can't remember who the third player was. It should be Brundle. Um, the stream isn't on the Lee Chess main page. That's weird. Why, why isn't it? Um, it should be. Are you guys sure? It isn't. That's weird. Why isn't an Elite Chess main page? Um, I have LeeChess.org in the title. Or not.
Make the title Clash Kids Immortal Game. I don't know what why it's not in there. Um, if I try to change the title. I don't know, maybe Lee Chess didn't like that it's a subscriber stream. There it is now. Okay, maybe it just needed to wake up somehow. Um, but thanks for notifying me, because we would have had a lot more viewers. So this, this position is really unpleasant for Black. Um, but a draw, if Black plays correctly. You know, Knight takes e4 looks, looks critical. So you played this, this. Um, it's all forced. And so G4 is uh, is the computer analysis, but it looks like you have other options here. This guy probably thought you were you were a computer playing this line, but then again, the computer wouldn't play knight D5, you know. So you can't really accuse White of being an engine. Um, he has no idea how much. How much uh, knowledge you have of this actually so the engine move is g4 i think we discussed this once i just mentioned it briefly plays e6 engine move ship g2 knight c5 also best move looks like both sides are playing kind of best moves here was bishop e7 best peter says b5 i mean that looks you are threatening to win a pawn, effectively, here. h5 for black. If h5, g5, definitely. You probably want to keep keep it closed. I mean, you could play h3, I guess. It just feels a little passive. Rook f8. Speaking of passive... Now he throws in h5. So he has the idea, but it would have been more effective with the rook... It would have been more effective with the rook there. Yeah, I like h3 better now that his rook's not on h8. He makes up his mind to attack there. Um, I'm not sure what you've got here with this d-file, though. I mean, you're kind of threatening, like, bishop takes c5 and bishop takes b7. What happens if you do that, by the way? I mean, I'm just curious. Did this go through your mind, Clash Kid, to try to take this pawn? I mean, because the second pawn is hanging on a6. It would be ultra complicated, I guess. Rook h8, pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. And then um, if you try to take the second pawn, then he has play on the other file. Up and running. Maybe Lee Chess doesn't like the exclusiveness. I think I think it's just um, just like something to do with my Twitch stream. Maybe uh, the title didn't get changed or something. I, I don't know. I've had been my, my my Twitch has been a little buggy with the with the two factor authorization the last couple of days. I have to keep like logging in, logging out, logging in again. And then um, when I tried to edit the the stream title today, it gave me like a red a red color, which was weird. Um, so I'm not sure it really went through correctly. So Clash Kid, I mean, you know, looking at this kind of thing, yeah, it looks like he's got too much play there. That's interesting. So Rook D1, I think the problem with Rook D1 is that you're not really threatening anything. I mean, I guess Bishop F4, huh? Come to think of it, you are threatening Bishop F4, aren't you? No, he's got D5, then C4. Maybe you, you have this, Bishop F4 followed by D5, C4 d5 right away i mean that's so that's like suicide right you're threatening bishop f4 no the computer thinks okay i mean you're down a pawn so it thinks you have full compensation for the pawn um he played d5 it looks like suicide and you hammered him with c4 i mean that's obviously these two bishops are just perfect for this position so it's opened up. He hesitated. It's a difficult line for black. 
he hesitated um but the engine finds like perfect active moves you know like rook h8 back again i think the problem with his whole plan of rook c8 was sort of sort of like uh you know he doesn't know what to do with his rook like right from this point he should just play h5 right away and um that would have been the best he could probably do with that rook it looks like try to activate it from its original square but he didn't find it. the other move the computer was talking about was like b5 i think um even playing b5 kind of makes sense but black's king is a little awkward yeah the f5 is so pivotal because this threat of bishop f4 turns out to be really strong um, not only that, but opening up the white square. So, you, you know, Clash Kid played great. He didn't let the guy get any play. And then he suddenly, you know, he saw Bishop F4 coming and he jumped from the frying pan into the fire, basically. Um, I think he just, I, I might have panicked here too. I mean, what, what if Black plays something desperate like King E8? I mean, how bad would it be if we did like King E8, let's say? That looks like a reasonable try, no? Just, um gonna lose the h pawn probably and if we if we take on h4 g4 first yeah that would be i mean what's your threat bishop f4 that's the worst you can do like bishop f4 followed by bishop takes d6 what if he just says okay you can have the d6 pawn i'm gonna play rook h8 white plays like bishop f4 and then gives away the d6 pawn that's his best defense. Either king e8 or just do something else and let you take it. And I think that black's still okay here. So he panicked with d5 when he should really like do nothing, basically. He has to do nothing, give the pawn back. Now, now it looks like he's in trouble because, okay, I don't know which way you should recapture, honestly. You know, it seems a little weird. It's tempting to take with the pawn, but it feels like your pieces need to be open here. I mean, this power with these rooks it seems weird to take with the pawn. It is a strong pass pawn, but he's blockading it with bishop d6, you know? Um, yeah, I think I think this is a weird recapture. The computer says even g takes f. So you can delay the recapture and take on f5. But rook takes would be like my blitz move. I would just take with the rook and keep all these fi li like files and, and lines and diagonals open for the bishops. I think this gives him like a defensive position he can hold. And that... Now it's like a kind of technical grind, but I mean, he's got this solid blockade, you know? So you kind of lost your edge there. And he tries to run away. And that pawn is weak, and now he's got another target on g6. Two bishops are very strong here. I'm sure that he can defend, but he has to play like perfectly. There he goes, running in the corner, and now you could re redeploy, maybe like that. Bishop to the other diagonal, d4, that looks good. He played rook e2. That's, yeah, this is looking tempting, you know, to come back and bring the bishop into the center on d4. That really looks, because if bishop e5, like, your pawn starts to move. So redeploying that guy. Okay, rook e2 is not a bad move. Rook f8, bishop g2. And I don't know what the time situation was. Uh, maybe it was like a blitz game. How much time did you have here? Now he's got a kind of dark square blockade going on. You finally found that idea, but it's probably too late. And the one thing that could happen that would be bad would be like, you know, he trades the dark square bishops and then beats you with like good knight versus versus uh, bad bishop. That's what the one thing you don't want to have happen here. You gotta be very careful about that. Yeah, he's actually in a little bit of danger now. Created, He created more weaknesses for himself and apparently he panicked now this is oh rook c3 check okay technical ending he has the he has the good knight versus bad bishop now that sucks and can we save this oh man you had this tactic oh my god and so you play a rook ending long game probably a draw huh King is passive. Okay, man. Interesting game. I mean, this variation, no doubt, good for white. Black has to be very careful to defend, but 
you had a lot of chances there, and um, I, I enjoyed taking a look at this because this is a special variation for me. Uh, Mule Skinner brings up a game. Let's hold off on Mule Skinner's game and play one more Blitz game here. Um, actually, we're gonna play Alan Peshka. Peshka, did you subscribe? Peshka's not a subscriber, is he? Let's play a Blitz game with with Bob. Guys, this is a subs I'm just having trouble pronouncing things. Pronouncing things. This is a subscriber stream, so I'm not going to play like random viewers. Just analyze games and play Blitz games with, with my subscribers on Twitch. And I think that uh, Peshka, I'm not sure. Are you a subscriber? Peshka, is Peshka, isn't Franco, is it? No, that's Franco has another account. Franco's from Russia, not Ukraine. Peshka, you didn't subscribe, did you? Yeah, you found an interesting game, Mule Skinner. I'd like to go over that, if you don't mind. Let's play this game with Bob. Bob, we're playing the King's India, whether you like it or not. Clash Kid, um, yeah, well, there's, I'm, I'm really happy you, you picked out a game that it's a variation that I play, you know, with Black, so. That's a tough variation for Black. I'm going to look more at E5, but I don't like playing E5 in that structure. If I wanted to play E5, I would play the Sveshnikov, you know, or E4, E5. Um... Okay, Bob, let's bring the Benoni. Let me know if, if Peshka is a subscriber. If we have any new subscribers, Blue Crow. You guys can always subscribe today and play right away. I also have my regular Blitz stream um, available to everybody Monday, Wednesday, and Fridays. So if you can't play today because you're not a subscriber to my Twitch stream, just come by tomorrow or Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern Time, and get in the list, and we can play. Um, just today, I'm doing this, this stream specifically to reward my subscribers. So don't be salty if you can't play. This is this is a special benefit to my subscribers. Um, Muleskin found an interesting game played last year in Chess Base, imported it to Lee Chess, and sent the link. All right, Mule Skinner, we're going to take a look. That will be next. So Bob, Bob is basically playing uh, the Tarash with colors reversed here. Perhaps white should take on d5 rather than lose, kind of lose time. I remember once I lost to Alexander Ivanov around 27 years ago in 1990. Playing this kind of structure with white, I... I had a bishop on c4 and I put my other bishop on f4. I thought, oh, my bishops look like active on those squares, you know? But the truth of the matter is, bishops on squares like this, in this kind of IQP position, um, the bishop on c4 is active, but the bishop on f4, this is sort of an empty diagonal and um, doesn't really have much function. Occasionally you'll see it like go to e5 to kind of maybe trade off the bishop on g7. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So the bishop on d3, actively placed, but not very effective against the fianchetto, because not like if I have a flat pawn structure on the king side, h7, g7, you know, f7, e6, then in these kind of structures, white has strong attacking chances, because the bishop bearing down on h7. But against the fianchetto structure, I think it's not very effective. I kind of like bishop g5, Bob. I have to admit. I wonder if I should consider playing bishop g4. I, I remember our last game, Bob played well. It was it was an accelerated dragon, but a different variation. Okay, this isn't an accelerated dragon. I played the modern this time, but something about this rem reminds me of my last game with Bob, I mean, where I did an early bishop g4, took out his knight. He could actually play knight d2 here. I would snap that pawn on d4. Um, probably just win material. So bishop g4 is kind of tempting. I wonder if he has some trick like queen b3. Could you dare play queen b3 here? Crazy. Like imagine this variation. Queen b3, bishop takes f3, queen takes b7. Could white dare do that? 
Could you dare do that? Dare you to do queen b3, Bob? Probably not the safest thing he could do. It might be possible. Um, okay, no, do you speak random languages? Peshka means pawns. Yeah, Pieshka. Pieshka. Bob, Bob must have heard me because he played queen b3. Okay, Bob, now... All right, bishop takes f3, queen takes... I'm looking for some sort of tactic here. Bishop takes g2. Oh, man, I love that variation. Some just crazy stuff going on. Looking for bishop takes g2. Can't believe Bob accepted my dare. I mean, I could play bishop takes f3. I've got to get this knight off of b8, though. Probably better just to develop my pieces. I don't see what I do after bishop takes f3, queen takes b7. I was looking at bishop takes g2, but I didn't see anything clear there. So I've tricked him into playing his queen to b3, but it's not clear that it's even that good for me. Did I miss something for... Did I miss something for black there? Um, can't turn down a dare. He's, he's from... <laughs> Pieszka. Yeah, I'm thinking of, like, the... Pieszka, like P-I-E. Okay, now Bob's gone too far. He walked into knight a5. Bob pr probably should go for it, you know, and play, like, queen takes b7 here. Um... That would be my recommendation. I'm gonna play knight a5 maybe anyway. In that position, then double his pawns. But, okay, the other option that Bob has that's very sound is knight d2. Probably this would be the like sensible move here. And Bob's probably equal after knight to d2. I have a weakness. I have a couple weaknesses. I mean, these pawns are good structurally, but they're obviously targets, you know, and... Um, 92, you know, so the question was, could I have called his bluff, you know, and taken here on f3, and after queen takes b7, what the heck is going on? What the heck is going on there? You know, I just, I couldn't really, like, I just couldn't figure it out. It was too complicated for me, my feeble strategic mind to comprehend, but now Bob... Bob has to be careful not to lose a piece here, but I don't think I can do anything too tricky. Bishop d7, he has bishop b5, so we're just going to take this valuable guy or girl. Seventh pint. I speak English with American accent after my seventh pint. Nefedov. I speak. English with an English accent after my seventh pint. Um, yeah, I always use that trick to pick up girls when I was extremely drunk, you know, pretending I have an English accent. Not something you do when you're sober. So, anything to be unique. Rook c8. Bob is structurally bankrupt with these double pawns double isolated 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 um he's also actually lagging a little bit in development there are currently 1965 people following me thank you plucro i wish they were following me concurrently uh, but we're doing all right so oh we just win in exchange it's not so easy knight b4 he's got tricks on my e7 pawn we can play knight before, then hit him with f6, and then stick it with knight c2. Yeah, this should win the exchange, basically. Win it for something. I mean, I've always got f6 whenever I want. I feel kind of materialistic, like I should be playing for mate. You know, maybe it would be more aesthetic to do something like queen d7 and try to checkmate him, but he's coming out. I mean, he's developing here at any moment, so I think we should take advantage of our opportunity to trap Mr. Rook in the corner and win an exchange at least. Obviously we have d4 too. But Bob, I hope you didn't play queen b3 just because I called you out on it because 
I sometimes, you know, okay, this is the point, right? F6. This ugly move is the point. Maybe there's some fancy way to play here with black, like knight c2, bishop takes e7, rook e8. Bishop takes d8, rook takes e2. It's too fancy. I'm going to weaken my structure to win the exchange and uh, hopefully the game. Slightly weakening the structure. The king is still pretty safe. We're going to play knight, knight c2. I think it's lost for white already. Yeah, can we hit 2,000 today? I do get a lot of subscribers. Um, I can't believe they're all for real. There seem to be a lot. Every time I log on to my email account, I get like subscriber, subscriber, subscriber. Um, but it's awesome. Not subscribers, uh, viewers, followers. Sorry, I wish I had 2,000 subscribers. We'd be, we'd be having uh, subscriber streams three times a day. Um, rule number one, turn off the stream when you play. Um, or you get beaten by psycho tricks. Yeah, yesterday I did something dirty. I, I used reverse psychology to like get my opponent to to make this move rook d2. Who was that? Was that against? That wasn't against Nefedov, was it? So let me see this, Bob. Um, okay, I didn't like the way you, you played the opening. Okay, I don't think that bishop d3 is the greatest. Then again, I don't know what is knight c3 and wait and see, you know. Whoops. So this position, um, you know, objectively, like you should play d5 here. I mean, they're really, or e4, transposing. You have a choice, yeah, Benoni or Marazzi bind. So if you want to lose, like I lost to Kovalenko, you can play d5. Um, if you want to lose, no, actually, it's hard to lose on the white side of the Marazzi. It's much easier to lose on the white side of the Benoni, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it is. It really is. I had a good game against Kovalenko, but no time. Um, so we go here, we get this position, and and now what do we got? Some random games. Taking on d5, castles, it's like a Panov, where the bishop's probably slightly better on c4. Can't believe we're not getting a transposition into some kind of known games here. And then bishop g5 was interesting. And I played bishop g4. I think that this is a more balanced move to play knight c6. I was curious what would happen if white would play like h3 here. Can I just simply take that pawn on d4? Knight takes d4. Knight takes d4, bishop takes d4. There's no tricks. Bishop takes g6. See, that's... That's getting weird, you know? I didn't want, like, weirdness. Um, it's a little bit too weird for me. So, I played bishop g4 right away, and he plays queen b3, which was just, I was joking, you know? I couldn't believe queen b3 was really a good move, but it's fascinatingly complex. And so, the key question is, if bishop takes f3, can he play queen takes b7? And that's what I couldn't fathom, what's going on here. Um, queen d6, like, this is a computer move. I mean, if somebody played that against me, I would be, you know, I would be, like, messaging, like, Lee Chess right away. This this is a computer. I mean, nobody can find queen d6 in a blitz game <laughs> if they're a human being. Like, just forget about it. You know, even the second candidate move here is, uh, is something I wouldn't even consider, basically. I was looking at some really weird moves, like bishop takes g2. But I was forgetting about this, I think. I think I was thinking I could play like knight b6. Maybe I can sack the exchange. Um, yeah, this is actually probably the variation I looked at. Bishop takes e7. Um, and now what? I sack the exchange. Queen takes d4. Bishop takes f8. For example, bishop takes a por el ejemplo. Queen takes g4. I don't know why I wanted to speak in Spanish. What do we got? What do we got? We're just down a whole exchange, but we're winning b2 and his bishop's hanging. And this is the kind of thing I was like, wow, this this is more complicated than I thought. So, so we're going to pass on that, and we play knight c6 and simple move. And Bob should just play knight on bd2. I mean, this looks good. 
and I think white's just slightly worse. Um, apparently you had this move, which is also okay for white. Okay, Mule Skinner, um, what are you guys up to? Yeah, Nefidab is speaking. He's speaking in Russian. Um, okay, we've got a message here from Mule Skinner. He sent us a link to a game. All right, we're going to take a look. It doesn't have to be your game. This is fine. But this is Garcia Vasquez versus Mule Skinner. Mule Skinner, are you... Where are you? Are you in Spain now? Are you in Barcelona? Request computer analysis. Whatever, man. Mule Skinner is black. Playing his beloved French defense, I can attest to him being a good French defense player. Knight d2, the dreaded Tarash variation. And, you know, I still think that the best for black is c5. I, I really, I think that people are too scared of isolated pawns. I mean, do you ever play this line, Mule Skinner? Just take, take with the pawn. I mean, old school. Do you own, who, who out there, raise your hands. Raise your hands if you have Botvinnik's 100 Selected Games. Does anybody here own the book Botvinnik's 100 Selected Games? Does anybody... we have any Russian players in the house? Um, because if you play the black side of the French, um, I think it would be... You, you should go and hide like in the corner if you if you never studied Botvinnik's games. Neil Skinner doesn't have it. Um, actually, Botvinnik played... he played the white side. Of, of these positions too. Um, I remember a very famous game he played in in the Soviet championship uh, where he played like Boleslavsky and he played a new idea where he put his bishop on e3 allowing Boleslavsky to like trade bishops on e3 and have to take back with the f pawn on e3. Mostly Botvinnik played you know mostly Botvinnik played d4 um, but I really, I really think this is, this is the most like correct way for black to, to defend. You don't get a spatial disadvantage the way you do in other lines, but anyway, um, okay. You don't want to face Anatoly Karpov in the Tarash. So here, um, Mr. Garcia played Bishop D3. This is a very compromising looking move, Bishop E3 d3 um you know e5 has to be critical i've played games with mule skinner in this line you know and there's there's two main lines i mean bishop d3 and f4 i play the f4 he's very good at that uh it gets very scary for white the best line is probably bishop d3 that's another story so gonzalez sorry uh, garcia plays bishop d3 and um yeah, I mean it's it's kind of tempting for Black to play a sort of Rubenstein here because you're you're already like trading pieces. I mean, but it depends on who you're playing against, right? Mule Skinner plus Mule Skinner likes closed positions, so if you like closed positions, you're probably you're probably not looking for that IQP position I suggested, and you also probably don't like taking on E4 here. Um, so what is the closed position aficionado play here? Difficult to say, huh? He played c5. That seems to be the main line. Knight c6 looks interesting. You could transpose to a kind of, uh, a kind of, what is it? Um, Guimard variation? It's called the Guimard, right? Nefedov knows the game. The Botvinnik game. Because you want to trade the dark squared bishops. That's the key. Trade the dark squared bishops. In that variation of the isolated queen pawn variation of the the Tarish French. Um, anyway, so c5 we have some kind of theory here. Oh, this is going to transpose though. Okay, so it's just a fancy way of transposing. You know, c3. I actually saw Larry Christensen play this once, and I was kind of like, "What is White doing?" You know, um, I, I don't really. Yeah, if Christensen played this in a tournament here in New England against. Igor Feugel once. I, I was kind of just... I don't understand what white has here. You know, it just doesn't look like white has any advantage at all. Um, I didn't get it, you know? 
But anyway, so we transpose back into main line. C3, knight C6, knight E2. Okay, well, here we go. I guess this is the main line. Vassier, Vassier against Ponomaryov, an old game. F6. And so, years ago, I remember one of my students looking at this line with knight F4 or looking at it with one of my students. The computer lo like looks at that and likes it. Not very topical, but I would, you know, I would recommend that to someone because it's like much less often seen than pawn takes pawn, which is the main line. F4 is another move. It actually has a very good score, the F4. What's the deal with F4 by the way? Why is why is that never played? Like there has to be something wrong with it. Um, anyway, welcome everybody to my stream. This is a special subscriber stream here on my Slaggy channel on Twitch. We're analyzing games for subscribers and also playing some Blitz with them. This is Mule Skinner's game. It was from last year with the board, 90 plus 30. Okay, um, it's 1900 plus opponent. I wonder what's wrong with that four. Feels like there must be something wrong with it. Yet its score is really good. That's strange. Neil Skinner probably knows something about this. Ivan Farago. I know something about him. Got a couple. There's an ill dark Hyrulean against Illusion. Apparently, this is playable. F takes e5. F takes e5 or d takes e5. Why is White's score so good? Black players just aren't prepared. Knight takes d4. Why is white's score good? So this is like some kind of pawn sacrifice. And white is scored well in both cases, castles or knight takes d4. Kuprechik played it with white. And Horvath Tamash. Wow. Okay, this needs more investigation, Mule Skinner. I would take a look at that. You might get caught in that, and if you don't know what you're doing, you've got to figure it out over the board. It might be a little bit tricky. So anyway, we have uh, Knight F4. Okay. I haven't looked at this in 15 years. Um, what's up? Peshka says he's in Twitch. Peshka, if you, if you subscribe, we'll accept your challenge. Otherwise, you have to wait till tomorrow or tomorrow or Friday to play. This, today's, challenge, today's challenges are just for my subscribers on Twitch. Um, but you're welcome to, to join us here for some analysis. Um, yeah, again, Queen E7, I recall. But apparently the main line is knight takes d4. Okay, if you guys want to know the honest truth, I only analyzed this position once in my life. It was 15 years ago with a student of mine. And uh, I don't really know the line, so I'm just kind of recalling it myself. Um, Mule Skinner, interested to know how much do you know? We've got a subs. Oh, we, we might have a new subscriber. Um, what is the idea of queen d6? Where was queen d6 move 11? Queen d6 in the previous game were you referring to? Queen d6 move 11 might have been sort of talking about a mention mention of a move in the previous game. Win knock Tronson. Played enough with him in Budapest. Um, so this is this is the crazy line. And obviously, Mule Skinner probably learned this. Yeah, I mean, now that I think about it, you look coincidence, look at this variation sometime before the game. Now that I, like, see it, I remember this is what my student... It was a guy from... My student was a guy from... Mm, I want to say Minnesota. And I can't remember his name. He was around 1900. 1800, maybe. But that was a long time ago, 16 years ago. That This is the, the line that he played in his game. This looks, you know, okay. The thing is, 
I don't like, you know, our structure getting messed up. This is like kind of a chaotic position. I'd want to take with the pawn if I, you know, if I looked at the position from a structural standpoint. I mean, if you take with the pawn, you know, obviously it's it's controlling a lot of key key squares, but I guess it weakens Black's king too much. Knight takes looks like the rational move to play like in a blitz game or something. And so king takes is the move recommended by the computer. And let's see what Mule Skinner did. He did knight takes. I mean, it's obviously like the same move you would make in most cases, but this looks very just cool because of the fact that you're moving your king, right? Their games going back to Hardison played it in 1985. Okay, so this is not a new idea. But once again, like this whole variation with knight f4, it's not a trendy line. Um, you know, so I'm not surprised there's old games. Kjartarsson's specialty. Johan Kjartarsson recently made a comeback. He played in like the Icelandic Championship. He's a great player who was at one time a candidate for the World Championship, but then he quit chess professionally for years and years. Now he's struggling to, you know, regain his former strength. Um, so Kjartarsson... Um, 85 that's really old so it looks like king takes is very interesting mule skinner i would i would investigate that according to the engine it's actually better but who knows we need to let the computer run much more than um guys if you want to analyze opening positions and you want to like prepare for your games don't prepare based on like five minutes with with stockfish you know here on the chest i would recommend getting a commercial program whatever it is like komodo or ribka or you know like the latest fritz or something and let the engine like analyze the position very deeply, like a specific position, like Mule Skinner could take this position and let the computer go really, really deep here. I mean, f a few minutes for Stockfish here on Lee Chess is not gonna give you really an accurate picture. Um, I would let it go a long time. The old days we had to analyze positions overnight. We would let, I would leave the computer on and let it analyze <laughs> my adjourned game overnight. I remember doing that. But um, it looks like king takes is interesting. So queen takes, king f7. The link to the Botfinic game. Thanks for that, Nefedov. Um, doesn't SF on Lee Chess have that capability to run off your own hardware? Um, yeah, yeah. But I would, I would, I prefer a different program to Stockfish. Um, something like stronger. There are stronger engines out there. I think Stockfish is okay. I personally, I feel like Stockfish is a little bit materialistic. I've noticed this, this, I've noticed this with it. You know, if I have to come off and say one thing, I feel that the Stockfish program is a little bit too materialistic um, opposed to other computer programs. So let's see, Castles, E5, we're still in book, Knight B3. Wow, this guy's 1900. He knows the line really well with white too. So we're still in like total theory. And then E4. Yevgeny Glazerov. Um, it looks like you got three moves at this point. This is amazing. I mean, this is move 16. And black has three really like playable moves. I don't like e4 because it is inflexible. You know, you've got hanging pawns, um, mostly like they're best placed together, adjacent to each other, controlling all these squares. So on the structural side, um, I'd rather keep my pawns fluid, but you know, I think this is a very tactical position. So there's a lot of considerations. I mean, both the statistics and the engine seem to favor Bishop e6. Just a solid developing move. It looks like people have played bishop f5 too. The downside of that would be trading pieces, I guess. But I mean, what is it about bishop f5? Take, take, bishop g5, is that a problem? Bishop takes f5, g takes f5, bishop g5? Looks like it. This is the problem with bishop f5. It looks like white simplifies. Ni Hua has even got a game in here. He lost, in fact. And um, Istrichescu Bartel, some good games. 
it looks like this is a serious mistake bishop f5 so bishop e6 is is the move that looks like the main line i guess there's a game tikanen this guy is improving this finnish guy tikanen um i've noticed him around his name coming up um you got ulibin losing to a really fairly low rated chinese player um I guess he's Chinese. And uh, Ulibin's kind of an expert. So let's see what Muleskinner's move does. E4, forcing him back. That does gain time. We've got we've to give this credit, you know, this move credit. It gains time for black at the cost of, you know, like kind of like committing your structure with the pawns. And now bishop e6. Following Glazirov. Or Glazirov. I played Glazirov in Predial in Romania it was a draw I was black solid player he plays the Stonewall Dutch and the French guy who likes white <laughs> white light squared pawn structures um, Bishop f4 and now the pawn goes forward so we left book here I guess Bishop f4 is a new move and ironically that's what the computer likes at first glance I mean, it's kind of natural, but it's also kind of natural to play bishop g5. I mean, that's the move that's played most often. And I would think... I mean, I think queen h4 would be a kind of natural move, too. It's interesting your opponent played the move that the engine likes best. It's a novelty. I'm paranoid. d4 looks good. Bishop c4 bishop c4 trading off that valuable white squared bishop this is a really crazy position i mean it's hard to say the black king is a little open but um the black king's a little open he's also down the exchange the central pawns are very dangerous though and um white doesn't have any real threats so it looks like bishop c4 Anyone else find book theory lim limiting and boring? Um, I think it is limiting, dude. And I think I know some players who uh, who lose their like their creativity because of it. But um, you know, I, I enjoy it at times, not as long as it's not too much. So it looks like we're out of book here. White played rook f c one, looking for an open file. Man, Mule Skinner played this well. Pass pawns must be pushed. It's a beautiful knight on d5. That, that's massive. And I think now black is, is better. Now this is a question though. You know, rook c8. I mean, first of all, because you're hanging the pawn on a7, but I wonder, when you're down the exchange in a situation like this, Mule Skinner, um, First of all, I think he he has a hard time he's having a hard time finding kind of like useful jobs for his rooks. It almost feels like they're a little bit redundant. So maybe exchanging rooks isn't the only move. I, I, I don't know. If there were no open files, I would say definitely don't exchange rooks. Here though. Such a tactical position, I mean it's hard to analyze it briefly. I would be nervous about abandoning my a pawn, but obviously Mule Skinner has has ideas. He probably justified in playing rook c8. Um, if rook takes rook, queen takes, and then you're you're penetrating down here. If rook takes a7, so a7 is not really hanging. You can breathe a sigh of relief when you trade queens. I think that black now is safe. No, the black king is safe. I don't want white to have any, any way to penetrate into the position. There goes our pawn. That's, man, I, I really don't like this exchange on F6. 
Um, but he has to try to take this pawn on e4, I guess. Basically forced. And so you're fighting for a draw here. Okay, where am I? D2. That's that's not ideal. It's not really an ideal situation to have the bishop on c1. Our bishop is um, is really like a non-entity. So I feel like maybe maybe somewhere along the line you simplified a little bit too much here to White's favor. Where, where do we draw the line? What happened here? Where did things go off the tracks? His rook started to get into the game, right? There's an interesting point here. This rook c4 is very strong. So what's the difference? I mean, the engine says bishop d6. Why is rook c4 so strong? b5 to stop rook c4, it looks like a difficult move to play because you're creating another entry point in the position. Um, the engine says bishop d6. It's hard to really understand what exactly the difference is here. Bishop d6, if rook c4, whoops, rook c4, um, you're playing e3 apparently. And that is pretty forcing. He's going to have to take. And you've got knight takes, and then what, rook? Rook d4 only move. You've got a pretty good active king, two good bishops. You've got a powerful passed pawn that might be past the point of no return, but black is active. Yeah, it's very hard to, it's very hard to say, hey, you should have played rook bishop d6 and you were fine. Um, I mean, that's what the computer is basically saying, so... What can I say? It's a dynamic position, and and you you know you intentionally played a really really sharp variation. You basically have to play perfectly. White played pretty well though, finding rook c4. I guess it was fairly obvious though. I mean this this is the problem. You don't have time to play e3. So here you could have played b5, difficult move to find. You played even that, and then he stopped e3. And now Mule Skinner. He's in trouble here. Bishop f5, maybe. You know, I don't like this this bishop getting tied down on c1 mule skinner. I think that was... That's a problem. You know? We don't want that to happen. He ended up just losing this pawn, and now it's like a technical ending. Yeah, man, I mean, it's a tough game. You know, you're following a lot of theory, um, and you, you did all right, but I think you have to calculate there more specifically what exactly is going on. The pawn's getting stopped, and, and not being able to play e3 seems like that was the determining determining factor. Let's play a blitz game here with Okano. Um, Brundlefil, I think that you get more into chess. As you get more into chess, um, you'll, you'll learn to appreciate the opening theory um, a little bit more. Okay, okay, no. I'm going to play e4 today. Guys, we're going to be back tomorrow and Friday with Blitz and uh, Classical Stream for everyone. Today's a, uh, excuse me. Today's a specific stream just for subscribers. That's a lot of words with S. Um, I almost never play the Rosalimo, but let's try it. See no evil. Um, just for fun, I like to throw out Bishop b5 sometimes. But okay, no, um, I don't know a lot of theory. I actually play this position a lot more for black than I do for white. Mule Skinner, I don't think I helped you that much. Um, I don't think I can help you that much. It's um, it's a really theory intensive game. Um, but I do think that we found an interesting point. You know, like the whole question of capturing with the with the knight or with the the king. I mean, if Harrison takes with the king on f6 and the computer says it's better, um, I think that's an interesting move to take a look at. But I mean, the way you played it should be, it should be fine as well. We're gonna take here and play um, play this classical. Now, as far as I know, you're supposed to take back with a b pawn. Everybody takes back with a b pawn. Um, I remember 
my friend John Fedorovich playing against like Boldogon or someone really good. But he had like he, he likes to do F six, knight e seven, knight g six. John had a name for that. Um He had a name for that setup where you do this really weird stuff, but the problem is the e f that bishop on c eight in this type of structure, I would think. How is that bishop going to get active here? Black could play e5. He would effectively have an exchange Roy Lopez. Um, something like an exchange Roy Lopez. I'm tempted to play e5, but on the other hand, then I give up the d5 square. There's going to be drawbacks. But I think that e5 is a principled move. I don't have to do it right away, though. I could wait one move. Also, there's these psychotic... I've seen psychotic pawn pushes before, definitely. You could consider maybe d3 first, a developing, a move of the developing variety. Let's play a move of the developing variety and then decide what to do. Nimzovich. Spanish Sicilian. Castles like Fisher, but it's, okay, I don't want to go into this craziness. I don't know. I'm not in the mood for craziness. <coughs> um, we don't have to commit to castles. I mean, I will I will castle kingside 90% of the time here. Um, unless black does something demented, you know, like h6 and g5. Even then, I probably would still castle kingside. But who knows? Um, I'm really, I'm really tempted to play e5. It's just that it's, it's a little tricky because I'll be putting my pawn on a square where it's kind of overextended. I'll be giving black a huge square at d5. Um, but the benefits may outweigh the negatives. You know, if I can kill his bishop, if I can turn that into a pawn for the rest of the game, this is something that Roman Jinji has really explained to me in our sessions together before he became before he, he and I parted ways, um, he he emphasized this particularly in like uh, Grand Prix attack type of positions where he would play bishop takes c6 and the Grand Prix attack Sicilian and then consequently black would play e6 and end up with a bishop that doesn't exist. Um, you can win games based on one bad piece. That bishop is usually it. Um, sometimes it's a knight, like in the Queen's Indian, you can get a really weird knight that just can't get into the game. Um, but more often than not, it's it's the queen's bishop. For black's queen's bishop, this is the piece voted most likely to cause someone to lose a chess game. Now, Okano played bishop e7. Kind of a weird move. Um, I mean, you know, I was joking about g5. <laughs> it's almost like he's going to play g5. I think that's a radically weakening move for black. And I guess if he wants to do that, um, you know, he can go ahead and do so. So, I'm not going to lose too much sleep over it. Probably I should play e5 at some point, but the question is, the question would be when, um, and the rest of my, my pieces. Another thing he might be thinking about is like bishop f6. I could play b3, bishop b2, but um, we could just play classically castle, castle here. If he does something crazy, that's fine. We'll just adapt and move on, you know. Um, I wouldn't mind, like, playing knight e1 and f4, f5, and, like, ripping black apart down the f-file if uh, if it comes to that. He played queen c7 now. So, I'm not sure he has a concrete plan. If I play e5, we're going to find out. I'm trying to entomb this bishop on c8. And maybe we have various knight maneuvers, knight here, knight here, knight here, or like knight c3, knight e4, obviously. Now, like Nimzovich, like Petrosian, I, I want to overprotect my strong point on e5. And once we get enough central control and overprotect that guy, we'll be happy we'll start mobilizing all the forces. Black's knight ended up in a weird situation here. 
he played h6. I was actually thinking maybe knight h6. Okay, no. Um, I, I don't even know if I want to take that. Because it would actually open up the g-file for you. So I'm, I'm kind of happy to see h6 because your knight doesn't have anywhere to go. Um, now, obviously g5 is still an idea. But I think we need a plan. It is a blitz game. We could overprotect with queen e2. Overprotection. This will allow me to move my knight away, you know, and not lose my e pawn if he does something like g5, g4. Um, but it's just a good move in general. You can play. Okay, he also wants to keep me off of g5. I think it's more about. It could be more like prophylactic h6, not about playing g5. He played it. Okay. So much for that prophylactic thing. Um, okay, well, the rest of my pieces would like to get developed too. I think c4 is even an interesting move. I mean, I have a backward d pawn. How the hell is he going to exploit that here? To be perfectly honest and rather blunt. Um, c4 is interesting, but probably not necessary right away. We play here. If he goes g4, though, where am I going? So maybe I should play h3 to slow him down. Slightly weakening my king's side. This could come back to haunt me, but I could also play g4. And um, I don't think black's in any... Black's not really in any position to, to do any damage here. The bishop on c8 in particular, not not functioning okay this is just like mental he's sacrificing a pawn um but we're not gonna cooperate you know um i'm gonna play g5 yeah this is this is okay aggressive and and i understand you want to do something but honestly i might be able to play king h2 and rook h1 in this position I think I'd prefer just to not do either. Let him play h3. Just ignore it or play g3. Now knight e4. Overprotecting this. <clears throat> He's going to castle queenside, but... It's really difficult to see how he's going to open up the, any line against my king here. I also have bishop f4. After bishop f4, what does he do? I'm, I'm threatening knight d6 check, which is really devastating. I think now we can definitely play king h2, rook h1. There were no need to go berserk. Are you using an engine? The white square bishop is trash. Of course, this this guy and mine is too, but I have more space, so I can afford. When you have more space, you can afford a trashy bishop. I mean, knight d6 check is pretty good. That'll keep him like totally paralyzed. f7 is hanging so he basically like has to take and it's over we found okano's weakness closed nimzovician type of lines we've got a knight coming to e5 which should be pretty damn tough to meet okay he has like queen b4 or something I hope I'm not getting too aggressive here. Sometimes you get carried away when you have the advantage and you start like losing, you know, losing control of like your, your defenses. I mean, I have to be careful. He might have some threat I overlook or something, but it looks like D7 check might be just game over. Bishop E8, D7 check, winning material. There are lots of good moves for white. I mean, he's strategically been lost. Yeah, I mean, ever since he went crazy it's not even about the material, it's just about, like, you know, the bad bishop and... The Rosalimo's a dangerous line. Um, 
I think Elcano should avoid, you know, this kind of line where he ends up with a bad bishop. So now, I guess we can play c4, among other things. But it looks like he found a good move. Rook f8, he's going to force something here. Got knight g6, though. Queen e3, knight, all sorts of good moves here. But, I mean, b2 is hanging. So, c4. That sort of protects here and takes away, like, any of this queen across business. Um, and now, I guess I just play knight g6. Winning material. What's our best move? Bishop e5. Winning a whole rook and nothing but the rook. So help you God. Um, yeah, looks looks tough. The moral of the story is the bad bishop on d7. That piece was coffinized from from the the word go. It's a tough line anyway, even if you play b takes c. But um, I have to confess, you brought back a memory of mine. I lost to Tony Miles in an exhibition game. Once I beat him in a Ross Lima with Black, but prior to that, it just popped back in my mind. There was an online exhibition game where Miles actually somehow got me into one of these kind of positions where he actually entombed my bishop, never got out. Somewhere back in my mind. I hadn't thought of that game ever, you know, and I think he brought it back for me. This old site called World Chess Network that I used to play for, me and a bunch of other players, Grandmasters mostly, um, some of the games you'll some, sometimes run over, run into in the chess databases. I'll have to check and see if, if I've got any games in there um, from my games with Miles. So, okay, no, I think it's it's over, man. We've got about another hour left in the, in the stream. Oh, Fiona. Fiona is, is streaming. Okay. That's cool. It's all about what you what you want, man. You want, like, you know, a sexy guy or you want a sexy woman to stream? It all depends. You can't make everybody happy. But seriously, um, we're all, you know, we're all business here on my stream. It's all about improving our chess game. That's the main priority. And this other stuff, bullet chess, pop music, you know, you can you can have it, man. You can find that elsewhere. All right. Okano is not having any of that. He is like, I'm going to keep trying no matter what. And he's starting to actually, he's starting to actually make some kind of progress. But you're still down a bishop, even after all your efforts. Go ahead and play h3. He did it. I'm going to make a force field on the dark squares. But I know that he feels like he's still got chances here. Good, good for you. You should definitely not give up. I'm going to hide my king on h2. You're never going to get me. You're never ever going to get me on that h2 square. I guarantee it. Not with an extra rook. Plus we've got mating threats. Just for the first time now, I'm starting to think offensively here. Look, Ma, no bishop. <laughs> oh, that's mean. Um, all right, guys, this is a subscriber stream. So if you're not a subscriber, you want to play, challenge me, subscribe on Twitch. Mule Skinners, does anybody else want to play amongst the subscribers? We analyzed one of Mule Skinner's game. Crawler said he can take with a D pawn. What? White just plays for D4 and tries to hold a strong center. Okay, I'm not sure which position we're talking about there. Just to be on the safe side first. Now we attack the king. Now I feel secure in my position. We attack the black king. And obviously, I mean, oh, that's going to help me. All right, now we've got queen a2, rook f7. 
and all sorts of good stuff. Collector of Souls. Did I have made in one? I had made in one, didn't play it. All right. Okay, no, it doesn't work well. Um, let's see just like how often people have taken with the D pawn there. It's, uh, it's like 51 to 1,688. You get the feeling that it's not a good move. Um, so, instructive mistake. All right, we're gonna go back here and um, we can analyze the game I played, if nothing else. We've got an hour left in the stream. But you guys, if you guys have a game you wanna go over, send me a link to my Sparkle Horse account on Lee Chess. You can do it right now. Um, we can wait a minute until somebody comes up with a game. <laughs> we're just joking. Guys, if you can support the stream by subscribing, I much appreciate it. I'm not becoming a millionaire. I just do this for the love of chess. Um, if I do become a millionaire, it will be due to probably scratch tickets. No, I gave up on those too. Oh well, we'll just have to play like the straight up lotto. Um, no, seriously, we're here to play chess and um, I'm waiting for more challenges and analysis games. If not, we're going to go over one of my games. I want to show you guys um, a game I played yesterday on the stream. This was against a strong player. It was Yellow Dragoon. And I'm not talking about this botched end game that I had. I want to show you the opening of this game. This was a 7 plus 3. I don't know why he chose that time control, but it's... I'm playing everything Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm playing every kind of time control between 5 plus 3 and 8 plus 3. This guy, Yellow Dragoon, he discovered my stream like a week or two ago. Um, he's, he's challenged me a few games. I think we played like three times. Um, no, one, two, two times. So, he played an interesting variation. Um, actually, this is the same line that Clash Kid showed earlier. But I'm playing Black Clash. Kid was playing White. And uh, this variation... It's, it's a sideline and it's a, def it's a variation I'm trying to kind of like prevent from becoming extinct because there's a variation that this guy played Yellow Dragoon that's very, very dangerous. Um, White usually plays Queen D2, but we can also e even see F4 right away. I think F4 is inaccurate because Black can play um, Queen B6 here. Leonid Stein is a, it was a very famous Russian Grandmaster who was extremely strong like in the 70s and early 80s but actually I don't know what year he died in the early 80s um, he died very young and he would have been like one of the well he was already one of the best players in the world but he is one of the few people who played this variation for black and the ideas are in his games you know influencing us even now today but Queen b6 is a strong move there so white plays Queen d2 um, and then I play rook c8 and then f4. This is the problem. This variation um, seems to be a very serious problem for black. To the point where, I mean, I'm not going to say this variation is a... Uh, can you re analyze a recent lotto ticket I purchased? A lotto stream. I was thinking Monopoly. Yeah. This variation almost pushes this variation. Um, F4 almost pushes black to the verge of extinction. Um, for example, my friend uh, Alexei Dreyev, he was playing this line like 10 years ago, actually a little bit less, as recently as maybe like eight or nine, seven, eight, eight years ago, he probably gave it up. But Alexei used, used to play like a lot of Karo Khan's, he still does, Karo Khan, French defense, stuff like that. But he was even playing this variation successfully for a while. He won one really, really, really nice game against Morozevich. But I noticed that Alexei gave it up, and I'm thinking it's probably because of this variation. Uh, this f4, it's extremely difficult for black to deal with. It looks like we can try h6, but that move, it always just seems like a lost tempo for black. So I'm trying to find a way to defend this line for black. And I lost a recent game in a Grandmaster tournament. You see all these games by Dreyev. He's like the only one, you know, from the top players who, who was playing this line. But he was successful as recently as 2011 against Grishuk. Um, the problem is, I think that he got bored of, of like lower rated players knowing 30 moves of theory and like easily making him beg for a draw. Um, you know, he can play it with black maybe to make a draw against Grishuk or something, but 
it gets like kind of tedious when 2480 players something drew drew against him. Um, so we have this variation queen a5, e5, d takes e, and um, the first person who played this against me on my stream was Julian Proleko. He's an American kid who's like a 2200 probably by now. Um, he sometimes comes to our stream. He's on Lee Chess. He played this against me one time, like last year. And then we had some games with a guy named Sean Shaw, who's mysterious, um, pretty good player. He said he was from Iceland, but he's disappeared from my streams. Um, anyway, I had a couple games with Sean Shaw. But first of all, I had a game with Leonid Yudasin, who was a world-class candidate for the World Championship. This was years ago, but probably 2012, um, I played Yudasin with Black. And after this move, Castles, I followed the book recommendation, which is bishop c6. The problem is, Udasin made this face at me when I played this line against him, and I was kind of like, why is he making that face? And Leonid was like making his face because he's apparently, he was like an expert in this variation with black for a while, and then he eventually gave it up. So he, he was like laughing because I played a variation that, that he plays himself, or used to play himself. Um, but I was totally oblivious. Um, so anyway like the theory is very complicated and it gets really nasty after knight b5 um bishop takes b5 e takes f6 and then bishop back to c6 um h4 and basically you know i'm saying like drev got bored of trying to survive this i would call it like a minefield you know, it's, it's just basically a minefield, this whole variation. Um, extremely unpleasant. You have to memorize like 30 moves just to make a draw with black. So that's the story here. Um, I decided to try to find something else. And so in my researches, I, I found this move, bishop c5, which has basically almost never been played. The only player um, who had played it when I first discovered it was Rusev, this Bulgarian grandmaster. He lost a game in 2015. Consequently, um, I discovered it. And now so, since then, um, it looks like this guy Konstantin Shinava has played it with black. And I also don't recall this game Stanajoski played against Transnetev. So it looks like it, it's picked up a few followers. Like since Rusev discovered it, um, these guys, hey, they're like, wait a minute, like me. They, they're like, oh, wait, we can play Bishop C5. But the scary thing is this. When I played it last month or two months ago in my last tournament against uh, this guy, Dmitry, or no, um, Daniel Gurevich, uh, it was the first round of a round robin tournament, and we didn't know who we were going to. I didn't know who, who, who I was going to play. Apparently, he knew and he had like prepared for me. Um, so the thing is, like, there's no way he could know that I would play this move. I mean, basically, I've got no games in the database with this move. It's, it's almost like totally unexplored theoretically. And um, Daniel Gervich kind of, he thought for a while, but he like quickly found queen d3, which is the computer engine move. Um, you'll notice it's only been played once. And you know, most people like my game Yellow Dragoon played queen d2 yesterday. You know, most people, Springer, all these guys play queen d2. But Daniel Gervich somehow knows to play queen d3 because it doesn't trade queens. And I was thinking, like, how in the world? Maybe you guys can guess, but maybe it's just a coincidence. There's this one game from 2012 with just some random players. Um, how could the guy know that I played this variation? I've got no games in the database. It almost doesn't exist, theoretically. Um, and, like, the chance of him looking at this random variation are pretty low. So... I mean, you go through this variation, there's a lot to study, and like, bishop c5 is, is hardly ever played, so the guy finds queen d3, um, I ended up losing this game, knight d5, knight takes d5, e takes d5, queen takes d5, and now you have to play bishop to c6, you want to play bishop e6, but you can't play bishop e6 because of bishop b5 check, a really nasty trick here, and then there's a mate on d8. So this variation, um, I had to find a way to improve it, but I did. I found an improvement, um, bishop c6, and uh, Daniel Gurevich played queen, um, queen c4 against me here. 
which is another engine move. That's total novelty. Um, it looks like bishop d2 is the best, but it trades queens and it gives black good drawing chances. So I don't know. That's the story with that. But yellow dragoon, he played the human move here, which is like knight takes pawn, pawn takes pawn. Uh, sorry, yellow dragoon played queen d2, and uh, this is interesting. So we have e6 here. I'm gonna go queen d2, and then knight d5, knight takes d5, e takes d5. I have to trade queens first. Rook takes, e takes d5, and he takes the pawn. And so there is actually a couple games here. These are all these guys, all these top games: Springer, Shanava, twenty-five hundred grandmasters. Um, I don't know what the best move is. I played a six. This is a novelty, and he immediately found the best move, Bishop e two. But then he blundered because I played bishop e6. He has to find rook d3 here, or rook d1. And um, Yellow Dragoon played rook d2. And all the viewers were like, you've got h6, g5, h6, g5, and I didn't see it. I can just win material here with h6, knocking him off this diagonal and, uh, and winning the exchange. So I was just totally oblivious and ended up like having to fight for a draw in that game. Um, what would I say if Yellow Dragoon played Queen D3? I'd say, how did you know about Queen D3? Um, you know, it exists in one game. But the thing about it that's strange is that the one game that it exists, ironically, is like of the five games that have reached this position, it's the weakest players. It's really funny. I mean, it's the best move. But uh, if you average the ratings of the five games, Queen D3 is played in the one game where the, the average rating is the lowest, which is really funny. Is this game Markich versus Fisher? Knight takes, not obviously Bobby. And then the guy makes uh, a debatable move here, queen b3. And it looks like this dude's move, um, you know, Daniel Gurevich might be the best move. Queen c4. I just can't believe he came up with this. I was talking about this with, with Grandmaster Seba Attila, who was there. And he was like, I, I don't know, you know, how he could find queen c4 over the board. Um, but I analyze this a lot, and black's probably okay, but I have to play perfectly. So this is an interesting move that, that Daniel Gervich didn't know about, bishop d2. And that's very complicated. I don't know if I should trade queens or not trade queens. But anyway, that's my interesting game for the day, guys, I want to share with you. Um, total, total kind of new theory, but trying to survive this variation. This variation that I went in the game, um, queen takes d5, let's see. This is avoiding the trade of queens. This this is critical. But our game with Yellow Dragoon yesterday, he, he doesn't have the, the queen trade. Um, I mean, he allows the, the queen trade. So the ending is probably like holdable for black. We're just trying to make this variation playable. I'm not going to be able to win because I'm probably going to be down a pawn and like struggling for a draw. But the computer says it's uh, h6 for, for black is best. And Rusev managed to lose to Jan Michael Springer. Um, but it really should be good compensation. I have two good bishops, all my pieces are developed, and uh, his pawn on e5 is kind of weak. So that's my sharing, sharing my ideas today. It looks very similar to the Franco 95 lines. The ideas are somewhat similar. I think black is more dynamic here, though. I'm sacrificing a pawn. Um, I have like the c file, some threats with my two bishops. Uh, this is this is a little different you know white is grabbing material here and kind of losing the initiative a little bit and against uh against the guy garevich i i probably could have held a draw but i would have had to defend it like really really perfectly um anyway guys let's let's go to what you what you want to look at anybody have a suggestion um send me a game in in the lee chess message Loving the immersive gameplay. This this is an actual game um, that I had from yesterday. Yeah, but he played bishop e2 very good. Um, this position is the question. He moved his rook to the wrong square. So it's rook d1 or rook d3. He can't go to d2, but I didn't exploit it. Later on, I was like totally winning, and then I blundered, and it was a draw. And then he misplayed like a very fundamental ending. You guys want to see the ending? It's kind of instructive. Um, before this... There was a position here where he has a draw. Um, let's see where it is. Now this, this I made a blunder later on, but right here, this is a very instructive position. 
In this position here, he basically has a draw, but only one move. Yellow Dragoon has to find Rook A8 in this position, in the ending. And this is a table base, so all these endgames with like four pieces, um, five pieces or six pieces have been analyzed with computers and put into table bases. So this has been exhaustively analyzed to, to perfect uh, depth, and, and it's a draw. But Yellow Dragoon has to find Rook A8. Instead, he blundered with Rook E8, and now I'm winning after E3. So... He had a really nice um he had a really nice stalemate trick that I'm not used to seeing earlier. I walked right into this. In this position, I walked right into this h3. I was having trouble making progress, and uh I was having trouble making progress. Although this is a technical win for black, it's not that easy. I think I should have kept my rook on f4 and uh, tried to walk my king maybe try to walk my king up somehow even if i have to give up the e pawn i'd rather give up the h pawn if i had to give up one it's not that easy to win with black all right guys i think we have a nefedov game cool okay our game all right cool yeah let's let's take a look oh this is well played all right i didn't remember which one it was this is from the simul a week ago okay Guys, just so you know, like last week I put up on my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training, um, a couple games I analyzed against Clash Kid and, and Move 11. I think against Bob, I took a look at briefly with the game with, with Bob Sakamano too. Um, he had a draw way earlier, Blue Crow said. He had the king in front of the pawn. He had the king in front of the pawn. He had a draw, really? Okay, let's take a look at this Nefedov game. Um, Nefedov, oh, this is where I was black, okay. Let's look at it from my perspective. I feel much more natural about that, okay. Okay, Nefedov, I played the, yeah, okay, this is cool. I played the, the Nimzovich defense. This is an opening that I like to play with black against people who are under, under 2300. Um, I've had success up to up to about 2300. I don't think I'd want to I don't think I've ever risked it against somebody higher than 2300 um, It's it works good against like 2100s maybe 2200s It actually is, is a very effective opening to take people out of book um, Even reasonably strong players a lot of them have no clue what to do when black plays knight to c6 another opening that Grandmaster Tony Miles um, used on a regular basis so knight f3, obviously we could transpose to classical stuff, but so here, um, now knight f6, knight c3. By the way, I should mention that this move, um, I was always under the impression that this was actually considered to be inaccurate for black. I'm, I'm not sure if it's that bad. For some reason, um, that I don't recall. Uh, I thought that this was considered to be slightly inaccurate, but it looks like it's playable. Um, I played knight f6, knight c3, bishop g4. This is something of a main line. Now h3 or bishop e3. Actually, h3 is rarely played, so bishop e3. This must be the best. Bishop e3, idea h3 and queen e2. First, we have to defend this. I guess that's the idea. Bishop e3, uh, once I saw Igor Feugel just absolutely maul someone, um, the idea is bishop e3 with the idea of queen e2 and uh, h3 and like g4, and you may attack very aggressively with white. So if black plays e6 here, he could play e5, maybe that's worth a try. But if you play e6, h3, and if bishop h5, I guess g4, queen e2 some combination of that. I only see one queen e2. We've got some g4s. d5's played a lot. And bishop e2. Interesting. I thought this was... I thought this was a good move. Queen e2. Maybe we have to play d5. We have to play g4 first. Then there's no time to defend e2. That's kind of weird. I'm wondering how, how, that, how you can actually get that in. The queen e2 idea. I guess it doesn't really work right here. 
yeah, maybe it works better against other setups. Weird setups like c6 instead of knight c6. If black had played like c6 instead of knight to c6, you could definitely do some weird stuff. Okay. You see Miles, Ieska Miles. This was a game that actually kind of made the variation look really bad. Um, Miles lost pretty badly against Ieska. He played uh, d5. I think this this is a this is a problematic line for Black. Miles played knight e7, I think, in some games. Yeah, this is the Miles Ieska game. Uh, it's it's this is pretty dodgy for Black. I I don't know. I don't really trust this. So, Nefedov should try to find something a little bit sharper than the way he played against me. He played bishop b5. This is apparently common too, but I never felt like this bothered me too much. Um, I'm not afraid of the capture on c6. When white takes on c6, you take back, and a lot of lines you get very active play, like the queen can come here on the b-file. Um, the capture actually strengthens our center. Nefedov played bishop a4. So I guess you're supposed to take, but I always felt like black's position was, was fairly decent, but I guess you can play h3 here with white, bishop h5, if g4, here's queen e2 now, maybe now it makes some sense. Whole bunch of Miles games, he lost to Hulak, Grosspater, even Stefan Kinderman tried it. Miles is like one out of four in this position. One out of three. See, queen b8 has actually been played here right away. It's pretty crazy. Not by mainstream players. Nanette Furchets. Um, so, let's take a look at the actual game, though. Because I think he needs to play something more critical there. Bishop a4, we've got just a couple games. I played b5, bishop b3, and now knight a5. You know, it's funny, it didn't occur to me, Nefedov, that I could take here on f3 unprovoked. I don't really like that move. You know, it feels like I'm, I'm kind of making a kind of concession. Yes, I could take on d4, but I don't think you really mind taking with a pawn here, you know? I mean, that seems like the natural move to to strengthen your your center anyway but apparently this according to the computer is best for black i'm not sure if i trust this 100 percent the idea would be to overwhelm the dark squares and then force you to go like maybe d5 but this this might leave you with two two bishops this type of position your your two bishops look look like kind of good here so i played instead knight a5 which is a new move and we leave past theory behind obviously I'm losing time, you know. I'm losing a lot of time. I was nervous about the center, and this game got really weird. I liked queen d3 over the board. I really liked queen d3. And now I took on b3. The engine says c5, though I have this Noah's Ark trap, which actually never occurred to me. This happens in the, in the Spanish sometimes, when the bishop just gets trapped with c4. Apparently, this, this would have been really strong for me. The Drevland says, What's your opinion on the Slav Botvinnik system as black? I consider it, but it looks super sharp. Of course, it's super sharp. I don't know what the latest is. Um, you know, it was very topical like 20 years ago. Um, I think that most people, for some reason, are playing like E3 against the semi Slav. I think it's sort of insipid. I mean, I don't know why all the top grandmasters play the semi Slav with e3 um probably to tell the truth uh drevland people are afraid of the moscow variation with h6 and uh and that's why they're afraid to play bishop g5 not because of the semi-slav i think the theory with the semi-slav is the botvinnik variation is still slightly better for white but probably the the moscow variation is is more problematic and that's why everyone plays these super like lame marins and stuff so I missed c5 against this guy. This is a subscriber stream, guys. So subscribers, we've got like half an hour left. If anyone wants to submit a game for analysis, um, we have a little bit of time left. It looks like I didn't like opening the file for his rook, but I figured I had to take it. But c5 was really strong. I just missed it. And now Nefedov is slightly better. I decided to play c6. 
try to suck it up here. But I think he was a little too hesitant. I mean, he's got e5, maybe. Um, that looks kind of dangerous, actually. I'm not sure what I intended on doing in this position. I guess take, and he takes with the knight, and I move the bishop, but where? I don't have a good square for my bishop. You know, there's no, no good square. What am I going to do? Put it on... Put it on d7. I mean, this doesn't look good for black. A weak pawn here. My bishop's attack. I'm behind in development. Um, I have to find very careful moves. He's given up his white square bishop, though. That's some concession. Black is way far too, way too far behind. <laughs> Getting dyslexic again. So Nefedov, I don't know. E5 looked kind of dangerous. I think you were a bit too hesitant. And that, and then I played knight d7 b4 you're a little bit too you know too scared of of stuff um probably you should be more aggressive b4 is a kind of defensive move he, he actually gets an advantage like a very small advantage um but i thought he's kind of hesitant bishop d2 very hesitant you know so black is i'm okay you're okay that's that's the name of this game and and so he played too hesitantly. I'm I'm able to equalize, and then apparently I blundered here. I don't know why my move is a blunder though. I guess it's just inflexible. I, I didn't realize like how serious these problems were going to be that I had these kind of targets. I was playing this game with basically five minutes of time, but you should play e5 with a space advantage. Um, it looks like I can play f6, but my e6 pawn is very very backward. So it would have been a tough game. But I think after this, I, I felt comfortable. It looks like an exchange, Karo Khan. But Nefedov still had this nasty, annoying pressure on the A file. And in time pressure, I was on the verge of losing that pawn. Rook E8 was, was a kind of paranoid move played in, in blitz pressure. Um, Rook A5 was good. And now I was like hoping I could play Bishop D8, which is why I played this. He played this. And I didn't know what he was up to. I played bishop d8. And I think it's like equal here. But he found an interesting move, rook c3. Suddenly he has rook c3 ideas. Well, maybe that's not a real threat. Um, it was difficult to see how black can make progress here. You know, so I played this move, which was like a blunder um, in time pressure. I should just hold my ground. And white can double on the a file, but I can just keep it protected. So I think it's like a Mexican standoff here at this point. Probably it's just a draw, um, objectively. And I thought he played a bit too hesitantly. He could have been had the better position if he had been more aggressive. Instead, he was just like solid, and then I'm basically equal until I made this move, and he's better now. Queen takes, and, and I don't know which way I should recapture. I took with the D pawn. Um, I'm losing my A pawn, and I think I'm in trouble. So I don't know, in time pressure, he offered a draw here. It looks like I have e5 and some counterplay, but I don't know if I would have found it in time pressure. This is an idea to defend, but obviously he can protect his pawn, then I break it up. Um, looks like he has a very bad bishop, but a pawn is a pawn and he can actually win my a6 pawn at the end, force this, and it looks like white's just better. Rook takes a6, rook takes a6. He's up a doubled pawn. He has a kind of bad bishop, so maybe I have really good drawing chances, but still white is a pawn up, a pawn is a pawn, and uh, Nefedov shouldn't have offered a draw, but he was a gentleman. So, what's your opinion on the Slav? Okay, we, we did that. Okay, guys, we got like 25 minutes left, so I can I can take another Blitz challenge, or we can analyze one more game. I want to welcome all the subscribers today. Um, Brundle, Phil, Nefedov, Plucro. Who else? We've got um, Mubat. Not that many of you guys here today. Um, we're gonna actually try to do the. We're gonna try to do the uh, subscriber streams in different days. I think next week maybe I'll make it Thursday to try something different. Let's like unofficially unofficially say next week it will be Thursday. Just to mix it up. 
because I don't want the subscribers stream to be every week the same day because different different subscribers won't be able to make it um, for those of you that don't know you may have just started following my stream I'm usually uh, I'm usually streaming from Hungary and I live over there like most of the year just that in July and August I'm in the United States so timing of my stream is much different I'm usually streaming in the, in the morning European time we're gonna go back to that but we'll try to be flexible but for the uh, for the Western players I mean it's hard to find a good time when I'm in Europe so I'm six hours ahead so late at night maybe if I do it at 10 at night there it's like it's really late for me though um, something like 8 at night we'll try to come up with morning and evening streams Bob let's try to correct this hippo he's he's played some weird hippo type of stuff um, but he, he has to be careful not to create like too many weaknesses in his position I think last time he played e6 I don't really like that move here Thursday is great I'll use my mouse what does that mean um, I'm going to do Thursday next week for our subscriber stream. Let's try to get a new subscriber before we finish today. Although, actually, I, most of the people who are here are already subscribers. So D6 I like, Bob. I think that's better than much better than E6. And now you can play A6. Or you can play Knight F6, transposing to the classical peers. Those are the two best moves for black. There are other lines, though. There's like old fashioned, old school c6. I'm not as fond of that. Can't fee and cat of the bishop. a6 or knight f6. Knight f6 is classical pierce. Well, you can play either bishop e2. I guess you can also play bishop e3. That's like the 150 attack, it's called. Never been too familiar with that. Crocus challenged me. Crocus, did you? Crocus, did you subscribe to the channel? We're taking just, just subscribers today. What's your opinion? You asked me that question. All right. I keep answering the same questions. What is wrong at the same time? 4 p.m., 5 p.m. in Hungary will be 10 a.m., 11 a.m. Well, I mean, Soltigo. It's, um, it's all on the table. We'll work it out. So, beef, B6. B6. Honest truth is that I like doing the streams in the morning because um, I'm freshest. I feel very, very fresh and I can play and analyze more clearly. But we'll probably be flexible and do both. So B6 it is. This is definitely a move though. Usually I would think more typically Blackwood Castle. This creates some original problems for me. I have a solution or not oh man I don't know if I castle what am I gonna do about my e4 pawn maybe that is a variation yeah I mean come to think of it I think that's a line probably a line e5 now I haven't even bothered with rookie one though he's undeveloped I mean this move might actually be a plausible threat in some positions you're on your old laptop and no mouse working away from home all right so now the plan is to take with a knight if you take with a pawn here um, I would think that black will trade Queens and my pawn will just get weak on e5 D takes E, he could also play knight D7, but let's say D takes E, rook takes, queen takes queen, rook takes queen, knight G4, bishop F4, or knight G4 E6, sacking a pawn, might be interesting. I could try to sack a pawn. My plan was knight takes. But this is pretty modest, honestly. This is actually quite modest for white. I'm not sure I have too much. Knight d7, bishop f3. That's the idea. I mean, this actually crops up in some weird Scandinavians with, with like queen d6 Scandinavians. Queen takes d5 and queen d6. 
usually in that case white maybe like doing a fianchetto with bishop g2 countering the bishop on b7 when black goes like a6 b5 in the queen d6 scandinavian we're basically like exchanging off his most dangerous piece and so now we have these things with invading on c6 which looks pretty unpleasant for black like just put the knight on c6 kind of freezing him also there's this nasty pressure on on the pawn on e7 so it's kind of hard to get out of this it's like a bind move 11 any fall winter tournaments planned nothing planned i've basically been disappointed by the tournaments i played last year um i played a tournament in in november last year was it november um I was thinking of going to to a tournament in Kovasna in Romania. It's a question of finances. The Romanian tournament would be would be good because I have a, a lot of connections there. In the days of, of my online full time online poker playing, I was actually like planning on moving to Romania if uh, if Hungary decided to ban online poker, which they were like constantly threatening and never actually been able to execute, but I would have been a Romanian resident instead of a Hungarian resident, but I never had the move. But I do have a lot of connections in Romania, so I wanted to play in Kovasna. There's a good open there. Um, I forget the town's name now. Um, it's like a region, I can't remember. Bob is in trouble. Other than that, I mean, maybe something like locally in Budapest, if I can. I'm a little bit hurting for money. Um, so tournaments are expensive. I mean, it, it costs a lot of money to like pay for travel, not work for like, you know, nine or 10 days. Um, it's a really big expense. Of course, it's even worse in the US trying to be like a professional chess player in the US and and play and play in tournaments it's it's really expensive um, it's a little easier in Europe so we've d done the damage I mean if I take the pawn he has some tricks maybe no nah, not really all right I feel I'm being materialistic here taking a pawn that wasn't going anywhere but say la vie i don't think he has anything special here let's just go back home black has lost his isolated pawn it's not gonna he's not gonna cry over that for too long he has a little bit of momentum i mean all the black's pieces are active this 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 london open december just in case but that tournament, like, for example, Nefedov is probably, like, one of the most expensive tournaments you can go to. I mean, London, Chess Classic, Gibraltar, um, all the best tournaments. You know, it's best to be, like, independently wealthy. Um, or, like, be, like, a, you know, 2600 Grandmaster when they'll... If they paid for all your appearance fees, I mean, all your, you know, expenses, it would be great. But, you know, even, like, the weaker Grandmasters don't, don't get their expenses paid for in most cases. Um, all right, is anything hanging? Should I play h3 at some point to stop knight g4? I think that's a good idea. Yeah, I like h3. Yeah, those are, I mean, I'd like to play in Gibraltar in the winter, but it's a super expensive tournament to go to. Um, a bunch of Hungarians go, though, and I might be able to, to get together with them. And uh, also my friend, international master, Julian Estrada, Actually, if I want to go to Gibraltar, that's in that's in like the end of January. Um, Estrada wants to go. I have to get on the waiting list for for Gibraltar probably like right about now if I want to play in that tournament. It's uh, extremely popular. So maybe some smaller opens. I played in a tournament in. Um, we've got Queen C4 check here. Maybe that's simpler. 
trading pieces. This pawn, though. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hope this pawn on c2 isn't going to be a problem. I have to lose time defending that. If you guys ever have any interesting tournaments, though, I mean, feel free to let me know about it. Why is it expensive? How does it differ to some Romanian tournament? Well, I mean, imagine, like, the cost of accommodation in London as opposed to, like, Romania. <laughs> it's probably, like, three times as much um, accommodation and, and food. I mean, everything is more expensive. London is probably, like, one of the most expensive cities in the world. I would imagine that's that's the problem. All right, we have to defend our pawn on c2. Gibraltar is notoriously expensive, just because. So, Eastern Europe is a good place to be, though. Not like outrageous cost of living which trickles down to the cost of playing in chess tournaments. Um, one of the reasons why people always ask me, why did you move to Hungary? Um, well, I mean, it's much more affordable to live in somewhere like Eastern Europe than it is to live in the United States. Unless you live some really backwater place in the United States. Um, it's a much more expensive... What did I do? This was just hanging. I had pre-programmed myself to play Bishop G4, like a pre-move. And uh, anyway, it's all good. All right, I wonder if this even wins more material, ultimately. Nope, he had the smart inner mezzo. Actually, it doesn't matter. Bob is toast. Guys, we have 10 minutes left. Um, Nefedov challenged me. I'm gonna take that challenge. We're gonna finish off for this game with Nefedov. Nefedov, where are you from? Out of curiosity. We always, I mean, I always would assume your, your name is like Russian or something, but you're from the UK. Okay. Oh, you're from the UK. So you're defending London. Okay. I understand. Nefedov. Nefedov, actually. I'm saying Nefedov, but it should be Nefedov. Now, I don't know that that's your real name. I forgot you're from the UK, but I mean, who knows where you're really from? Um, he's currently in London. He's defending his home territory. Natural, I understand. Um, he's discriminatory toward Eastern Europe. That's all right. You can have your big city. I've been to London. I only really stayed in London once in my life. It was an interesting experience. It wasn't really PG rated, so I can't share it on the stream. Um, okay, castles... I mean, parts of it were PG rated, but the fun parts weren't. D4. It was a long time ago, like most things in my life. Nefty. Nephi. I like that. Nephi. Here we are again. The most common position in the, C th in the C3 Sicilian. Where did that come from? In the symmetrical English. Friends, this is a stream for subscribers. We're going to do another one of these next week on Thursday. So, Nefedov will have his mouse handy. I dabbled in London's erotic delight. I'm not going to make any comments. There was one witness, but he's... He's somewhere like a hermit. He's living somewhere like a hermit now, so I don't think he's going to be telling anyone. Ironically, it was someone who actually I traveled with previously, and he exposed some of my... He previously exposed some of my adventures in writing, ironically. Nefedov trading queens on b6. And, uh... Yeah. Interesting move, though. So we go with the full-on bishop, bishop e3. Make his life a little uncomfortable. 
trying to be materialistic. It's gonna be, it's gonna be hard to hold on to that pawn, but I don't want to get myself making unnatural moves and getting tangled up with white either. Right, rook a6, so. Okay, I mean, the first thing that comes to mind is like knight b5, knight c7, try to win the pawn by force. But we have to consider that black has, you know, it's easy to forget that you're playing against an opponent sometimes and that they have ideas too. He's going to try knight g4 and or knight e8 and try to activate, you know, maybe create some havoc of his own. I kind of like h3. London, yeah, expensive. No comment. It was expensive a long time ago, too. Is somebody going to, like, criticize my shirt for not being straight? We had that last time. The neck of my t-shirt isn't straight, and nobody let me know. It's funny because it's when it's straight, it feels weird. And when it's not straight, it feels, like, comfortable. That's what threw me off last time. Okay, the C4 pawn. The C4 pawn is an issue. We're going to defend our knight on c3 from Mr. Bishop and then be able to play b3 without any kind of nasty tactics on the long diagonal. The Karpov school of prophylactic play. First I played h3, stopping any visitors from coming to g4. And now we're playing rook fc1, preemptively guarding the knight on c3 so I can play b3. It's like a chain reaction. I'm doing this so I can do this, so I can do this, so I can defend that, so then I can attack and start picking up like weaknesses like e7 and b6. And I'm keeping my a rook, you know, it would be more normal to do like rook a c1, keeping my a rook to protect my a pawn in this position. Yeah, you commented that you look like my middle school acquaintance, Steven, who never had a symmetrical neck loop. I don't know what it is with me, maybe I'm just not straight. But I'm not looking at my camera all the time. It bothers me when, when like the, the OBS screen is is up at the same time. I like to just look at one thing at a time. So I'm not I'm not I'm not vain, you know. I'm not like checking myself out on the stream. I just am, you know. You got the, what do you say? Um, the natural me. Oh yeah, I seen Nefedov do this. Didn't Nefedov do this once before? Not that long ago with the E6. A very committal move. You're tempting me to go after that D pawn. He's also keeping me off of. He's keeping me off of D5. He's got adequate defensive D6 here. If I play Knight B5, things could get interesting. But that darn B2 pawn is. Um, if I go like journeying with my knight, I'm going to set myself up for trouble. Okay, a4 is really tempting. Rook c2 is kind of interesting. Am I going to regret playing rook c2? What can he do though? He can't play bishop d7 without just dropping a pawn. I mean, that can't be good. We've defended b2 now, taking away his ideas of d5, and, um, or not. Maybe not. Maybe he does d5. Okay. Let him do d5. Damn it. Okay, d5 will lose a pawn. That's all there is to it. It just loses a pawn. Take, 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 you know, and if, I, I think, um, now if I do rook d1 and we do the d5, take, 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 um, well, it's a different story now. We do rook d1 and that's going to pin him along the d5. That's going to create a lot of havoc for black with that issue. So I'm basically planning on like b3 and then crawling over here and building up the pressure on the D-line. 
Maybe it's not necessary to do that though. Okay, now we, we like what we see. I like 98, that's a nice passive square. It's basically purely defensive and can't hurt me directly. Um, B3 is interesting. Bishop takes C3, Rook takes C3. Rook takes C2, Bishop takes B6 with a big positional edge. That's not a bad idea. It would be equal material, but I would, I would pick up a really important idea there. I've also got A4. That looks like a silent killer. You got to admit A4 is looking pretty interesting here. Kind of like going for everything. He can still do bishop takes c3, rook takes c3. It's not that different from the other line. Um, but I'm ready to play b3 now. The shirts are well worn. Soft, but they keep their sheet. <laughs> what are you talking about? All right. Um, haven't been to the beach this week, so if I'm not pink enough. It is, the sun is coming out though. I think we might make it to the beach. Not tomorrow, but like Thursday or Friday. All right, come on, Nefedov. Time's a wasting. We're gonna we're gonna make you pay for that. That queen b six eccentric, the eccentric queen b six. Nefedov has. He's attempted to go very directly here, but he's given up the key dark squared bishop, and I think that's gonna leave him in a very awkward situation um, but still not that easy to put him away c5 unfortunately c5 d5 and black just kind of holds on I do have c5 now rather e4 now and black is barely surviving b3 I don't know about b3, but b3 is not a bad move. Either b3 or e4. I'm probably going to have to play b3 eventually. It looks like. You could do b3, b4, and c5. And then just keep going. With like b5 and c6. We need to get everything in, I guess. E4 is also good. All right. Well, anyway, some combination of the above. E4, B3, B4, B5, B6. B4, B5, C5, B6, C6. <sighs> I blundered. Apparently, I blundered. I'm going to have to play C5 now. Okay. But c5 he just takes, and I'm not that sure. It's like I blundered. I wanted to play b3. All right, I'm still okay. I've got a lot of compensation for the pawn sacrifice that I didn't mean to make. Well, now we just have to accept that we blundered. We just have to accept it. Blundered rook b4. Very nice defense, sir. Okay. Do we come back? Should I play bishop d4? I guess bishop e3 is probably better. Just accept that I'm a pawn down now with pressure. The A file. So we go to the A file. Nefedov outplaying me. What is his rating? Oh, 1452 in bullet, but he doesn't have a mouse. Um, it would help to have a mouse. I would definitely be lost if he had a mouse. C5, what? C5, D takes C, Rook takes D7, Bishop takes, Bishop takes C5. Yeah, this is, this is the problem. This is, I lost the pawn. I still have good compensation. 
but he's defending like a genius. Um, he's also stopping everything now. <sighs> Man, I don't know what to do. I guess just take some space. We'll take some space and be patient here. We have kind of long-term compensation based on the dark squares around his king. So rather than force things, uh, let's try to get a stranglehold on his king. Just accept that we lost a pawn and move on. I'm not going to cry and cry for hours because I made one mistake. That's life. The knight a6, this is an excellent move. Except I have rook d3. Does this give us a chance? Changing back to our previous plan? No way to defend the d6 pawn now. No more knight e8. I half expected him to play um, a b5 actually liquidating. Maybe not a bad move. Liquidating his... Uh, his pawn there, though it could be dangerous due to tactical considerations. Rook a7 or rook a8 in some lines. So he's he's hunting more material. We have a lot of compensation. Do we have enough? Now e5 or bishop h6. Bishop h6 threatens all kinds of nasty stuff. Do I have a better move? Bishop d4. Bishop d4 looks pretty pretty sweet, actually. Bishop d4, the nastiness. Hard to defend. Um, well, he'll have to do something extreme here to try to hang on. Extreme defensive ideas. Second exchange, I don't think that's going to do it, dude. Um, you're going to need to find something else. DST, yeah, I don't have any GM norms. I'm, I'm zero. Zero norms. Came very close once. I'm not sure if Nefedov overlooked this. Well, actually, I'm sure he overlooked it. There simply is no defense. Oh, there is a defense. Oh man, there is a defense. There is a defense. We conned him into resigning. Is Black even lost here? I don't think he's even lost here. It's really weird. I'm such an idiot though. I played Bishop F6 check. No, I'm not an idiot. Actually, I had to. Well, that is so weird. He resigned in a not lost position. Knight c7 and knight e8. Um, apparently, I'm clearly better. I have some nasty threats. Knight c7, rook d8, check knight e8. And then we have the handy dandy bishop f1 with the threat of bishop b5. So he has to go here. And then if I play like a computer, I can win. That's apparently the... <laughs> if I play like a computer, I'll win. Um, okay. Not so easy, Nefedov. Premature re re resignation. Did you guys hear the doorbell? The UPS guy is here with a new battery for the... A new battery for the uh, cordless telephone, which I broke the other day. All right. You, kn you know that your... You know your donations go to a good cause. Batteries for for cordless telephones and stuff like that. Mouse. Um, all right. I'm going to get a new doorbell sound for the stream. I think that's a good idea. When there's like a new, a new subscriber enters the room, 
web like a doorbell sound. This is an excellent idea. Um, that's awesome. So anyway, guys, I got to get out of here. I got work to do, videos to make, lessons to. I think you, you really defended well, Nefedov. You actually gave up on yourself too early, and I've done that myself. Um, it's a really difficult position, but it's only winning if white plays like God. You know, I have to find this move, bishop e2. Which I probably wouldn't have been able to find over the board. King e7, and then pull the rook all the way back. And even then, it's like super complicated. I don't even see why this is necessarily winning. You're, you're just getting kind of slowly skewered. I guess you can't defend against bishop a3. Is that what I'm, is that what I'm hearing? You can't defend against bishop a3. Oh, crap. Why can't you defend against bishop a3 with another move? Like, let's say, why not like rook c7? Bishop a3 check, yeah, king f6, for example. Um, yeah, again, if someone played like this against me, you got to go directly to Lee Chess and report them for being a computer, because, like, a normal human being doesn't find this continuation for white. I mean, it would just be too hard to find the exact order of moves. I mean, in a tournament game, it's one thing, but Nefedov, I would have probably messed this up and um, played something substandard and you could have held on. I mean, like a normal move like F4. Yeah, I would I would probably play that, you know, and maybe be able to win, but it's, it's not easy because black has this B pawn coming down the board. Anyway, guys, thank you for subscribing. Thanks for watching today. Um, Blue Crow, what's up? We're going to see you guys tomorrow with a regular Blitz and Classical stream. So again, thanks for subscribing. We'll see everybody tomorrow, visitors allowed and spectators and non-subscribers. Check out my YouTube channel, Video Chess Training on YouTube, and please keep the subscriptions coming. Um, this was a special event just for my subscribers. Next week, I'll send out an email to the subscribers, but next week we're gonna do this one on Thursday instead of Tuesday. Just so you know, next week, subscriber stream Thursday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Take care, guys, and bye-bye.